ready. Like, bro. Okay. So he, I, ready's not really like a thing. Oh, it's it's I rhetorical. See. It's I for see. me. Okay. Then maybe you'd say it in your head. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, what's going on, Father Pierre Toussaint? We are the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. Father Pierre Toussaint is with us. We're gonna we're gonna address uh, racism, social injustice, social inequality. We're gonna talk about what uh, the Church teaches in this regard. So we're gonna touch on that real quick, and then we're going to talk about what's going on in the world and how we can respond in the year um, 2020. Father Pierre Toussaint. Um, I think the first question that we really need to address is for many people, many of our viewers, it's the question is, is racism real in the year 2020? Is social inequality like real? What does it look like? How does it happen? So just some point from some of your experience, some of your insight, like what can, what, should, what, what would you like to say about it? What should we know? How is it real? So I guess to kind of couch this whole discussion, uh, just looking at quotes yesterday, specifically Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he mentioned that racism is real. Obviously, and racism is like dust that is in the air, and we don't really see it until there's a light shine on it. You know, I think this was happening now. I think this was going on, and and yeah, I've experienced it in my life. Um, my patron has experienced it in his life, and so it's something that that affects people in a real and specific way. Racism. I was back in college. I was driving, and uh, a couple of my buddies were in the car, and I made a left down a street. It was down in Florida uh, where I went to school, and sure enough, somebody just, hey, N word, you know, yelled it out at me. And, uh, and it hit me, it was tough, you know, like to be called that. And I was angry and it was just a reaction. But it was interesting, my, my buddies too, they were with me and they're both white. And they were like, bro, does that, does that happen often? It's like, happens enough, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like one time's enough. Like, you know, another time, just later on down the road, I was, I was getting food at this place and the cook sees me and he's like, hey, we got some fried chicken. Hey, we got collard greens. It's like, is this guy serious? My family's of Haitian descent. And so we don't grow up eating fried chicken and collard greens. That's not something that's a part of mine. It's not, I don't want your fried chicken and your collard greens. Thank you very much, you know? But once again, it's just a, a reality that, that we go through. And even, even still to this day in 2020, you know, uh, I've had discussions uh, specifically about blackface, about different things with people in the church who just don't get it. You know, like the person, somebody asked me like, oh, is that, is that offensive blackface? Like, yeah. Yeah, it is like and it, and it hurts to like have to go through these things over and over again to have these discussions and and sometimes people are just unaware um until they're able to understand you from where you're coming from that there's a history there that this isn't like a one-off event like blackface or the different things that are happening now but racism has always been some unfortunately a part of our society uh, something that we've kind of been silent about and something that we just haven't seen and every once in a while there's these flashes in the pan and then all of a sudden it gets brought to the forefront and then it kind of ebbs back down and, and, it, and it permits or it permeates and it's constantly there. And it's something that I have to deal with on a daily level, on a daily basis. Um, something simple as saying goodbye to people and, and watching the person say goodbye to yeah, the white people in a certain way. And then come to me and be like, hey, bro, hey, yo, this and that. Like, my man, you don't talk like that to everybody else. Why are you talking like that to me? You know, and so there's these prejudices that happen where like, okay, this is the context in which I'm going to address this person because he's of African-American descent, you know? Um, and it sucks. Like, and it's not, it's not fun to deal with. It's difficult once again, just to understand like where African-American people are if you haven't walked in our shoes. Um, if you haven't been like in a day, like walking around as African-American person. So my buddy, he says he goes on a train and he, he notices people clutch the purse, you know, people like, edge away from him and he's a normal dude you know like it's not like you know he's menacing or anything like that or he's carrying a baseball bat you know um just a normal guy school bag on <laughs> going to the train it doesn't happen for white people when they walk on a train you know like just look up and then people are back to their texting but like there's some something imperceptibly that that people do or maybe it's perceptible uh just reactions to somebody who's african-american once again he saw that and he has to deal with that he doesn't say that you know like he doesn't like go walk, walk around and say you know like you know, I'm not going to steal your purse or whatever it is, but it's just something, once again, that, that he has to deal with. And I think it's important, right? I, we, there's the idea, we usually talk about Jesus sometimes, but I think we just use it talking about the truth, is that the truth is going gonna, gonna to comfort the afflicted. It's going to afflict um, the comfortable. And I feel like some of what, like some people, the way people have asked you questions, maybe not responded. Part of the thing is this, is there's going to be a temptation for, for all of us, the accepting and, and, and acknowledging and encountering the reality that racism is real in the year 2020. 
and social injustice is real in the year 2020, it should be a discomforting truth, mm -hmm. right? And so I think to a certain degree, if we're not uncomfortable with the state of the world right now, if we're not uncomfortable, there's some way in which we don't, we're not in touch with what's happening. Right. You know, um, but also there's gonna be a temptation to, to not be uncomfortable or to sort of um, alleviate that by downplaying the situation. Yeah. So, so, so one guy says to you, like, blackface isn't a big deal. It's like, you don't get it then. Right. You know, you don't get it then. Or, or, or all the, these different examples you shared, like, especially taken in harmony, like, one of those is too much, one of those hurts. And don't, don't defend yourself yeah. or sort of protect yourself by downplaying the real suffering that many people uh, are experiencing. Yeah. yeah. And it's a daily cross. Right, like it's something that once again, it's something, yeah, it's something that people carry, sometimes silently without saying it. But I think now is a time to, and it's always been a time, but like now is specifically a time in, in our in our environment that we're living in today, has yeah, to speak up about it and just to say, okay, this is this is enough. And nothing changes, like nothing changes, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So generally, the audience, Catholic audience, uh, it's important to recognize that we know what the Catholic Church teaches. We'll name that in a second. But within the church itself, as you alluded to, people still have prejudices yeah. and act from these places. And if we could, using your patron's life, for example, sort of just shed a little bit of light on yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. So Pierre Toussaint was, uh, was a Haitian slave. He came from Haiti uh, to America right at its inception. So, so this is like the 1780s, 1800s. He's, he's in New York. He's successful as far as a business. Um, he, he's cutting hair. And so... Long story short, he would help to fund Catholic churches, help to fund seminarians. So he's super generous with his money, super generous with his, with his time, a daily mass goer. And uh, in just one instance, he was going to St. Patrick's, I think old St. Patrick's Cathedral, and uh, he just wasn't allowed into mass. Masha says, no, because you're African-American, you can't come in today. Like, wow, <laughs> that sucks, you know? Yeah. Just in the catechism, it says specifically that um, based off of our human dignity, um, that we're precious in God's eyes, and so there's there's no race or color that separates us. Um, that we're all children. That we're all His children. That we're mm -hmm. all um, specifically just loved by Him. But unfortunately, sometimes in the church, like you're mentioning, there are people who don't quite get it yet, who don't quite understand that, who don't quite live that way. And so Pierre Toussaint experienced that one singular person, um, you know, just acting that way towards him. And but that's not to say that that's how the church is, you know. And my understanding is this, and clarified or qualified, is that we can't hurt somebody just by active racism, but indifference towards it or, or silence towards racism itself right. can be hurtful. Right, right, 100%, yeah. Because, yeah, Thomas More spoke a little bit about this, but just in the sense of, and it's not his exact quote, but like silence is compliance, you know? Um, and so, yeah, if you're not saying anything actively against it, or if you're not, yeah, specifically, hey, this is wrong or... I support this cause, then you're, by your silence, you're, you're admitting, okay, this is something okay, mm -hmm. I'm okay with, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, we're going to look at it prayerfully. How do we take this to the Lord? Yeah. What do we do as far as listening? And then um, how can we sort of publicly respond? What do I do? Where do I take this? How do I, how do I bring the Lord into this in my life? Yeah, yeah. And it's, and once again, if you don't, if you're not in the shoes, if you don't understand what's going on, then like it's, it's very difficult to, to actually like positively do something. So we just celebrated Pentecost and there was something beautiful about Pentecost where the church is one, you know, like it didn't matter what the language was spoken on the day of Pentecost, that everybody was understood. The idea is that we need the Holy Spirit, we need Jesus, we need God the Father to help us see our brothers and sisters in, in the light that he's created them in. And so a simple prayer that I love, um, that I, I oftentimes pray myself, I tell penitents to prayer and stuff like that is, Jesus, help me see what you see and feel what you feel about this other person, specifically people you're struggling with. Um, but maybe in this context, you know, like, Jesus, help me see what you see and feel what you feel about, and you could say whatever it is that specifically you're struggling with, um, if there is some struggle in seeing this, this, uh, this whole issue from a specific way. And also too, um, just for us who need healing, us who've gone through difficulties, we could say, Jesus, help me see what you see and feel what you feel about myself. You know, like speak the truth into that. Speak, speak into that. What, it, what are you saying? What do you feel about me? Um, and I think from there, once we're able to see it with God's eyes, once we're able to understand it from his perspective and his, his viewpoint, then we can actually positively do something or say something or actually, you know, come from a place of prayer mm -hmm. as opposed to just like spouting off the top of our heads and, yeah. and making things up that actually become more hurtful than actually yeah. helping. Yeah, and I think, can, to add to it a little bit, 
some of us we, we might be like okay whatever like i'm not like i'm not a racist mm -hmm. like i don't like okay i'm fine but just to invite the holy spirit if there's areas in my life where i'm acting out of prejudice and i'm not aware of it is there anything lord just give the lord permission to speak into your life and shine his light and, and enlighten your conscience to just to to clean house to, to right. do a good examine right. you know to see it to let god shine the light on any dust in there that you're not aware of i think it's great and i do think this is a time for intentionally praying into the area of racism yeah you know, it's it's not just another issue. It's 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 an issue that we need to take a look at now. We can't just wait for the next new cycle and, and move on. But let's pray about, pray for social equality, pray for healing for those who've been hurt, pray for conversion for those who are hurting, um, and pray for truth and and light for those who are still walking in darkness. Right. Listening. Yeah. So how do what does listening look like? How can we listen? You can't properly listen properly listen unless you actually you understand or like you have some sort of knowledge of what's going on. And yeah, just not focus, don't focus on the one event or the one thing or like specific, be specific, but just understand that there's a history here. Um, so specifically with the way African-Americans are treated, you know what I mean? Like there's history of slavery, the history of, of how we've been treated in this country. Um, and so it's not just the one event of George Floyd, you know, um, as tragic as it is, it's not just that, but there's other events. It's not an isolated thing where, okay, because of this, we're gonna, we're gonna start writing and stuff like that. No, it's because of the years and just not yeah, being listened to or just not yeah, just going through these different struggles that we have gone through. Like, like I have my own personal history of, of racism. Um, yeah, this is, where, this is where it's coming from. And so in order to listen, you have to take those things into account. You have to be able to, to somehow, okay, take a step back from, from my preconceived notions, my preconceived way of thinking about this and having this background information, I'm gonna enter into this, this conversation, enter into this, this whole reality, just yeah blank slate as far as like I'm not gonna think this is how the reaction should be or this is how the response should be but once again understanding that there is a lot more to this than just than, than just George Floyd you know mm -hmm. and again it's there's the it's an absolute tragedy the the death of of George Floyd but like we talked about is there's there's a history mm -hmm. and so part of listening I think is researching right and so again this is a time for active listening active engagement do a little research into uh, racism and, and civil injustice in our country, in your state, mm -hmm. in the world. Active listening or like really a deep listening is don't allow your experience of, of the social inequality and the racism and the conversation today to be limited by the headlines. And we as Christians, I, we should be great at this because we understand that so there's a priest who does something bad, there's Christians who do something bad, and if somebody tries to reduce all of Christianity to these what these other people are doing, which isn't in line with what we're standing for, like we'll, we'll we're sort of insulted by that. So don't dismiss this conversation because a series of people who are making the most noise are doing stupid things. Right. And so I think that's not I think that to I think that's not listening if you're just picking up a few headlines, but my encouragement would be to to really p get into some articles, read some journals, read some blogs, watch some other videos where people of African American descent are sharing their experience and it's not just the headlines try to be active in listening to the heart of of the issue right ask a friend ask somebody who you know who's, who struggle with this like hey you know what's going on for you type mm -hmm. of thing you know like i want to i want to understand what's happening not just like yeah i just want to understand what's what's going on so just talk let's talk about this you know so first we're going to the, we're going to prayer we're, we're deep listening research getting the history we're deep listening by listening to what people are saying we're listening through conversations with those with our friends or family. Can we publicly do something? What does what does that look like? And this is just my my two cents. I mean, there's a lot of things that people could do and yeah, just be creative as best as you can to, to try to support. But I think once again, you have to do something. You know, like you have to say something. You have to yeah, just to show your support for people. If it's something where you prayed about it, you thought about it, you've listened and now, okay, I'm gonna do something, maybe simply posting something online. Just posting like support for the African American community or condemning racism or, but just to show something as far as like, hey, look, I'm not with this. This is not something I'm a part of. I don't want this to be a part of my society, for my children, for my people, my friends that are growing up in this. Um, I don't want this to be a part of our society anymore, you know? And so to actively, yeah, publicly say something, um, to take to social media and mm -hmm. just to, to do that. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're posting, when you're saying stuff, don't just, okay, just because I wanna be on this or in this and like to kind of give that public, idea i don't just say it to say it but like if you're gonna say it mean it you know like just actually put your heart into it and, and and be honest you know like hey look this is what i think this is what i mean um 
because yeah. nobody wants a half-hearted answer. Nobody yeah. wants a half-hearted thing to this because that doesn't change things. That doesn't change, once again, um, the society or specifically the problem that we have yeah. in society with racism. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really well said. I'm really grateful that you, you jumped on this with me. It's not a comfortable conversation. Yeah. It's not a comfortable reality. But in a lot of ways, I think we as Christians in a church, in some ways publicly, have been a little bit too safe and too yeah. comfortable. Yeah, and we need to have it. We need to have this conversation. Yeah. Um, not just, unfortunately, right, once again, uh, unfortunately because of the passing of George Floyd, this is kind of brought to the forefront. But it's not like this is new, you know, yeah. but, but I'm grateful to have this conversation. I'm able to, grateful to be able to, to say these things, mm -hmm. you know, because it's real and it's yeah. necessary. Pray, listen, do some research, have some conversations, um, watch some videos, read some blogs. Don't dismiss and don't limit what's happening in the world to, to riots. Right. I mean, that's not, that's not what is at the heart of the issue. And then lastly is, is um, you know, when you can, say something. Say something, be public about it. Ernie? Yep. Hey, how's it going? We just wanted to say um, we recorded this video on Tuesday. Just in light of all recent things that have been happening, we just wanted to say firmly and resolutely once again that, that violence isn't the way, crime isn't the way. Um, and just to kind of couch it once again in, in, in Martin Luther King's words, that darkness cannot cast out darkness, only light can. And so we just want to encourage again, just for light in the situation. Um, and so it comes through prayer, it comes through dialogue, it comes to listening to people and also being listened by others. And so just to encourage that, that, that movement happens. And so simply just close on a prayer. You know, we invite you to pray with us, to pray for this, this change to happen. The systemic change to happen. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Uh, God bless you all. We are definitely in, united with you in prayer and in conversation.